today we're going to be moving into a different topic than we were talking about last time. So last time was our one lesson from Unit 5. The rest of Unit 5 is more honor stuff that we don't have to really talk about. So now we're really jumping into the Unit 6 material. Um, so the rest of the unit is going to be on similar triangles and using ratios and proportions. Okay. So we're going to introduce that idea of what is a ratio, what's a proportion, how do we work with those. Then we're going to introduce similarity in general at the bottom. And then after we kind of set the foundation, our future lessons will be diving, sorry, diving more deeply into how can we work with similar figures and use what we're about to talk about with solving in that context. So first of all, a ratio. Has anybody have you heard of a ratio before? Hopefully, right? It's a comparison of two quantities. by division. A comparison of two quantities by division. There are a couple different ways that we can present a ratio or use notation to write it. Um, so does anybody remember what a ratio typically looks like when you see one? We're going to be using A and B to stand for numbers. Colon. Mm -hmm. So we could have A colon B. This is one way you could represent a ratio. What's another way? A fraction. So A over B, like this. And there's another one that's a little bit more abstract. You guys remember how you say the colon? Say A. Somebody said it? Two, yeah. So another way that they could say it is A to B. You could use the word two. That's just the colon idea, but using words instead of symbols. So these are three different ways that they could represent a ratio for you. An extended ratio is something that we're going to be looking at. It relates more to shapes. So when we're working with a ratio, you only have two things that you're comparing. But when we have like a triangle, how many sides does a triangle have? Three. Three. But we still only want to compare two at a time. So how many different pairs can you create with three? Yeah. So think about it. If you have A, B, C, right, you can compare C to A, you can compare A to B, you can compare B to C, right? Stuff like that. So when we're writing an extended ratio, this is taking all of those relationships and putting them in the same ratio. Okay, so I want to be concise in how I explain this. So we're going to define this as comparing multiple quantities okay, through multiple ratios. They're all going to be strung together. Okay, so this is what an extended ratio might look like. So let's say you wanted to compare, all right, example, examples, right? A ratio might, an extended ratio might look like this: a colon b colon c. See how there's three parts instead of just two? This is an extended ratio. What are the different ratios that I could create out of this? If I wanted to split them up. This is how you would write an extended ratio as one form. But what are the three different ratios that this actually contains? A to B. What else? A to C. And then there's one more. And then B to C. So this one expression here is actually made up of these three. You compare the first to second, the first to the third, and the second to the third. We don't have to worry about like writing the letters in a different order. You just break them up into the three different combinations that you could make with those. Okay. So the extended ratio idea is actually something we're going to use within triangles and angle relationships and things. So I'm actually going to work with that first before I move on into other types of things. Okay. So these are the types of questions that you'll be using extended ratio to help you with. They look kind of like word problems. They may or may not have a diagram drawn for you already, so you might want to create one for yourself. But this one is describing the sides of a triangle. It says the sides of a triangle have an extended ratio of 4 to 8 to 9. Given that the perimeter is 63, we're going to find the actual lengths of the three sides. Now this right here, this ratio, remember a ratio is a comparison. Is this saying that the side lengths are 4, 8, and 9? 
No, it's just saying that their relationship as a fraction would be 4 to 8, 8 to 9, and 4 to 9. That's their relationship, not their actual measures. And that should make sense because they're telling us what the perimeter is, right? The perimeter should add up to 63 and 4, 8, and 9. Don't do that. So the way that we're going to work with this, the side lengths are not actually 4, 8, and 9. They are multiples of 4, 8, and 9. Write that down, please. The side lengths are not actually 4, 8, and 9 exactly. They're going to be multiples of 4, 8, and 9. So are they 4, and 8, 4, 8, and 9 times 2 times 3? We don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to label the picture. Label the picture. Which one of these sides looks shortest to you guys? On the, on the left. So which one of these numbers do you think represents this? Four. four. So instead of writing four, I'm going to write four x. So I know it's going to be four times something because it's a relationship that's using four to represent that relationship. I just don't know what x is right now. All right. Do you guys think this is the medium or the long side? Medium. medium. So what number do you think represents that? Eight. So I'm going to call this eight x. Again, it's not exactly eight. It's eight times something. That's what multiple means. I just don't know what x is right now. And then how do I represent this side? Nine x. So remember, you never use just these numbers. You just stick an x on them and then put them into the diagram. All right? What do I know about these three sides with the rest of the word problem? They should add up to 63. So can I use that to help me find x? What equation could I write? I can take the representations of the three sides. I don't know what their actual lengths are, just know they're four times something, nine times something, and eight times something. And I can set that equal to 63. Hopefully you guys know what a perimeter is, right? Good. So the length around the side of a triangle or any shape is the perimeter, we know it's equal to 63. So if I solve this, what do you get for x? So when you, when you combine like terms, it's 21x? So it's 63 divided by 21. 3. Alright, so x being 3 is telling us that the sides are not 4, 8, and 9. It's 4, 8, and 9 times 3. Okay, so what would this side be right here? What's 4 times 3? It's 12. So this would actually be 12. I don't know if it's inches or centimeters or something. I don't know. Uh, but it's 12 something. Right? What's 8 times x? 24. And what's 9 times the value of x, which is 3? All right. Once you get here, what's something you can do to check to make sure that you are correct? You can add them up. So what's 12 plus 24 plus 27? Is that what the perimeter should be? Yes. Yes. Okay. How else can I check to make sure they have the correct relationship to each other? Didn't we say, shouldn't this relationship be 4 to 8, which is what, half, right? So is 12 half of 24? Yeah, so they even have that relationship preserved as well. So whenever you guys get these answers, so double check, make sure that the perimeter is true, and make sure that the relationship between these two numbers is the same as in the ratio. 4 to 8, same thing as 1 half, so they should be half of each other. 4 to 9, 12 to 27 is the same relationship as 4 to 9, so you guys can check using that. Great. So remember that when you guys are writing a fraction, if I had written like 10 over 8, is this a simplified fraction? No. So you would simplify your simplify this yourself, right? What would this simplify to? Five over four. Five over four. This is what the ratio would look like, even though in reality the fraction was ten over eight. That's what's happening here. This is a simplified form of the fraction being simplified all the way, but your final answer should be kind of expounded a little bit by figuring out how you need to multiply to get the actual final answer. So we're going from simplified to unsimplified in this picture. That's what we're doing. I was just making up an example of showing you that this is unsimplified, but the ratio will be presented in smaller numbers. All right, so let's try another one. Let's see another scenario very similar to this. All right, the ratio of the angles of a triangle are in this extended ratio. This is another way that they could express, this is actually an extended proportion, actually, because they put an equal sign in there. Um, we're trying to find the angles measures. So what's significant about how this is represented? What's slightly different about this one compared to this one? Yes? They're saying that uh, ABC equals 459. So they're saying that the measure of angle A is 4 degrees? Yeah. No. No, no, no. That's it's not just, what they're saying. It's just, uh, it's not that degrees itself. 
That's the representation. Okay, so that's the representation of all the angles. Do you guys see how, or what number aligns with A? What number aligns with B? And what number aligns with C? Do you guys see how they're in order? Mm -hmm. They do that a lot of the times to show you which number goes where. Over here they didn't do that, so you get to pick wherever you want. But if they specify what letter goes to what number, you have to make sure you follow that guidance as you're going through the question. So if this is angle A, what should I write inside of this as a representation? Four. Four X. Remember, you don't just use four, five, or nine. Those are the representations, but we need to blow them up a little bit by multiplying them. So we're going to use X to represent, represent that multiplication. What should go inside the five? Sorry. Five. <laughs> inside of B should be five X. And what should go inside of C? Nine X. All right, if you need to write it out for yourself, just remember, add X. Add X every time when you're writing the numbers down. All right, now they haven't given me perimeter. Because you're supposed to know what happens. What happens with the angles in a triangle? Yes? They equal 180. So over here, they had to give me perimeter, because that's not true for the sides. The sides do not add to 180. A couple people did that on the test last time. The sides do not add to 180, only the angles do. So for this one, I can take 4x plus 5x plus 9x equals 180, because we're working with angles here. Four plus five is nine. Nine plus nine is eighteen, so eighteen x. So what's the value of x? All right. So they're saying that instead of the angles being four, five, and nine, it's four, five, and nine times ten are going to be the actual values that we're looking for. We're trying to unsimplify this relationship, just like we would have unsimplified a fraction, like we were doing over here. So what's the actual value of me of angle A? Forty. Forty. What's the actual measure of and what's the actual measure of C? So again, you can double check, add them together. They should still have to add up to 180. If you're going to do the relationship check, 4 to 5 is the same relationship as 40 to 50. When you relate 40 to 50, doesn't it simplify down to 4 over 5? That should always happen. So you can always use that relationship to double check, make sure that they simplify down to the original relationship in the question. Okay? And then one more. The measure of two angle, two sorry, complementary angles are in the ratio of two to three. Find the smaller angles measure. So again, are the degree measures two degrees and three degrees? No, it's not two and three. Those are representing the angles. So what should I write inside of the angles? Should I just write two and three? Two x and three x. Remember when you're working with ratios with these scenarios, you add an x to that value, because it's just representative, and then put it into the picture. What's the word that I underline that's helpful here? Complementary. So what do I know about these two angles? When you, they equal 90 when you add them. So I can take the two angles, 2x plus 3x, and set them equal to 90. That's what complementary means. That's 5x equals 90, what would x be? Eighteen. Alright, so if x is 18, notice how the question is asking for these smaller angles measure. And these ones we wanted all the sides, all the angles. This one's specifying. So which one of these two numbers, the two or the three, represents the smaller angle? The two, obviously. So the smaller angle is going to be two times x. The x is 18. So it's the measure of that angle. Would be 36. 36. Right, because that's 18 times 2. Alright, so if they're specifying which angle you want, you don't have to find both of them, just find the one that they are focusing on. Alright, so whenever you guys see just ratios or an extended uh, proportion here where they're assigning what number goes where, this is how you would follow that, that question. Alright? Everybody clear on that? Now we just add an x. Put them in the picture, add an x to the number, and then use perimeter, the fact that the angles add up to 180, or any other prompts like complementary or supplementary. Alright, just underneath that, we're going to talk about proportion. Alright, so proportion is related to ratio. Does anybody have a guess on how we can define proportion? Do you guys know what a proportion looks like? 
A ratio is just one fraction, right? What makes a proportion? Two simple fractions. Mm -hmm. Specifically, how many? Two fractions. Two fractions with what in between them? An equal sign. An equal sign. So, proportion is an equation between two. Proportion is just taking two ratios and saying that they are equal. So proportion can be like this. One half is equal to, what's another fraction that's equal to one half? Two over four? All right. What other, what's another fraction that's equal to three over four? Nine over what? Okay. So you guys see how they're equal to each other? They just look different. Does so everybody agree that these two fractions are equal? They just appear to be different, right? Because they have different numbers. One's unsimplified, one is simplified. So that's basically how a proportion works. You're taking two fractions that are equal to each other, they just look different, and you're writing that equation. So you can have a ratio, sorry, a proportion look like this or like this. They can use the colons or the fractions, so be prepared to see either of those. You have two vocabulary words that you guys want to be aware of. Two parts or two different letters of the proportions are called extremes and the other two are called means. A and D, in this example right here, A and D, the first and the last numbers, those are called the extremes. The means are the two middle ones, B and C. This one's more significant to remember because we're gonna talk about something called a geometric mean a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so the end numbers, the very top and very bottom of the fraction called the extremes and the two inside ones, the bottom and the top of the first and second fraction, those are called the means, okay? So we're gonna work with that a little bit later, but just introducing the vocabulary now because we're introducing proportions. This right here is significant in a couple different ways. So this will help you solve if your proportion is set up funny, and it's also something that they might show you on the SOL, trying to write a proportion in a couple different ways. So let's say that you guys start with your normal A over B, C over D. That makes sense, right? Alphabetically or whatever. Um, this is how you start. There are four different ways you could rewrite this proportion and have it still be representing the exact same equation. So, for example, if you guys were to start with this proportion, all you'd have to do is take the reciprocal of each ratio, flip it upside down, and it would be exactly the same. So, see what I did? I had 11 over 4 and 3x over 5. I just took both of the fractions and flipped them. This is going to be exactly the same. Well, I don't want to use finger as a symbol, but these two proportions will give you the same result. Do you guys remember how to solve that? Do you remember the butterfly method or cross multiply? If you were to cross multiply these, you'd get the same answer. So, one way that you can rewrite a proportion and have it remain true is to flip both of them. Would it be true if I flipped just one? No. No, you have to flip both at the same time. Another way is that you guys could switch the means, so that's where the vocabulary comes in. What are the two numbers that I switched in this example? The 4 and the 3x. Those are the means, and that's what we defined up here. These two positions, the bottom of the first fraction and the top of the second, those are called the means. If you were to switch those, that wouldn't change the truth or the similarity or equivalence between these two proportions. If I cross multiply, does 4 times 3x change when it's 3x times 4? No, you guys remember the commutative property, right? It's the same idea here. This is just the commutative property, if I can spell that. I don't know how to spell that, but it's basically the commutative property is what's going on here. You can switch these two and it won't matter. Same thing over here, but this time we're going to switch the extremes. Right? Remember, vocabulary extremes. The extremes are the first and last numbers in the entire proportion. So if you were to switch the 5 and the 11, it still wouldn't matter because 11 times 5 is the same thing as 5 times 11. Okay, so you could switch the means, switch the extremes, wouldn't change anything. And then this one's more rare, but just in case, I'll show you this one too. So a fourth way that you can keep the equivalence between the proportions is to take the bottom number and add it to the top for both of the fractions. 
So instead of 11 over 4, I took the 4 and added it, so then it's 15 over 4. And I took the 5 and added it up there now, so it's 3x plus 5 over 5. So it's really rare, you don't see it that often, but just in case, another way that you can make them same, the same is just add the bottom to the top and move on. So again, more rare, you want to focus more on these three. Okay? That's just a little, in case on the SOL they show you like, here's your proportion, which one of these options is the same? These are what you want to focus on. Did they switch the reciprocals, did they switch the means, or did they switch the extremes? That's what you want to be focusing on. Great. Now into the most important concept that we're going to be continuing on for the next couple of lessons. Okay. Is the idea of similarity. What's another word for congruent that we use a lot? Equal. Right, so equal means the same in every way, right? So if I were to draw two triangles that are equal, they should be the same size, they should be the same shape, everything about them should be equal, right? That's the idea of congruence. Congruent figures have congruent corresponding angles and sides. Everything is equal, just like this. You guys see this example, like we talked about before? All the angles are equal, all the sides are equal. That's congruence. Similar is what we're going to work with in this unit. What does similar mean? Same general features, right? So for similar shapes, um, do they have to be the same shape? Like, do you have to have two triangles? You can't say that a triangle is similar to a square. So they both have to be triangles. But do they have to be the same size? Size. <laughs> do they have to be the same size? No. That's what's different with similar. Different. They have to be the same shape, but they can be different sizes. Right? So what happens with similar is that they're going to have congruent angles. Their angles have to be congruent, but their sides are going to be proportional. So that's why we introduced proportions, because instead of checking to see if the sides are equal, we're going to see if the sides are proportional. And again, we'll dive deeper into that in a second, but that's what's different with similar. Instead of everything being equal, you guys should notice that the angles are the same, but the sides don't have any markings. That's going to be true for similar, but not congruent. Right? I also changed the symbol on you guys, so this is something to be paying attention to. The congruent symbol is that equal sign with a squiggle on top. Similarity is just a squiggle, not equal. Just make sure you're paying attention to that too. Right? So scale factor. Have you guys ever heard of a scale factor before? Possibly. Yes? No? Yes, you've heard one? I think it's the fact by which something is scaled up or down. Yes, basically. But we're going to define that a little bit more specifically in this example. So the scale factor is the ratio. Oh, I'd be very specific. The ratio of oops, the ratio of corresponding sides of similar figures. So the scale factor is just going to tell you what the relationship is between the sides that are proportional. And one extra thing you guys want to write must be in simplest fraction form. So you guys are writing a scale factor, it does need to be a fraction. And it does need to be fully simplified. So for example, I'm going to have you guys create this example for me. Let's say that this side right here is 2. Everybody start off with writing a 2 right here. Okay. How much larger would you like this triangle to be? 2 times. 2 times as big. So if this triangle is 2 times as big as this one, what would this side need to be? Okay. You guys pick this side length. What do you want this form to be? Does that mean? One. Oh, okay. So we call this a one. Remember, I said this is two, so let's try to keep it the same. So if this is a one, and this, again, this triangle is two times as big, what would this side be? Okay. And then lastly, three. You want this one to be three? Okay. How big would this side be? Six. Six. All right. That's what we mean by different sizes, but they have to be proportional. I have to use the same relationship going from one triangle to the next. 
Could I say that this was four, but this one would be five? Is five two times as big as three? No, so the relationship has to be true across all the different sides. And that relationship that you guys just told me, two over one, this is the scale factor. It's two times as big. Now, I like that you chose two as your example. It has to be written as a fraction. You can never write a scale factor as just two. If you want your relationship to be two times as big or three times as big or something like that, you have to write it as two over one. Always a fraction. Okay? Okay, questions on that before we actually apply that. We're going to see it in more specific context on the next page. But to begin with, is that okay? Turn the page. All that we're really going to do with similar figures is decide if they're similar in the, similar in the first place, and then maybe solve for some missing measures using proportions. That's really all we do with similar figures. So I have two different examples here. I have this one right here and this one right here. Those are not triangles yet. We'll get into triangles a little bit later. Do you guys remember what these are called? Trapezoids. We're going to focus on these quadrilaterals to begin with. So my first question for you guys is we're going to find which angles are corresponding and congruent to which angles. And then we're going to write proportions for the sides too. So what is corresponding to A in this one? F. Do you guys see the little markings here? They're corresponding. So A should be equal to angle F. Remember, angles are equal. That's what's that's what carry overs from congruent. The congruent triangles and the similar triangles will have congruent angles. What does B correspond to? G. Nice. They give you the symbols there. All right. They haven't given you the little markings for C and D, but you should be able to extrapolate it now. What corresponds to C? H. H. So see how we have this side right here, BC. You can extrapolate that on this side, GH. So then C corresponds to H. And what corresponds to D? J. Is it okay? J. J. All right. Whatever, K. All right, so all the angles are equal. You should be able to get that real quick. Now what we're going to do is write a relationship between the sides. Notice how, let's see, we're starting with B. Okay, so BA is right here. What side corresponds to BA? Be careful how you say it. GF. GF. Remember, the ordering of the letter is still matters here. If I go from B to A, I have to name the side GF. The ordering still matters in this unit. Now notice how this is 10 and this is 20. Are they equal? No, they shouldn't be. If they're similar, they shouldn't be the same. They should be um, proportional. So if this is 10, what should go here to represent GF? 20. So we're just filling out these fractions. All right, so we're starting with GH, which is right here. What side corresponds to, sorry, J? JH. Remember, if you're not sure, you can use the angle chart that we made up here to see what corresponds to what. So JH corresponds to DC. They've been uh, reflected. Uh, what's the measure of DC? Now the measure? Four. We're filling in both sides. We're saying what sides are related and what their measures are. Okay? And what corresponds to CB? HG. What's its measure? 12. All right. Once you guys analyze the picture a little bit, find the relationships, figure out if the angles are equal, my question for you now is, are they similar? Now, there are two things you guys need to check. Are all the angles equal? They all correspond and they're all equal. Are the ones that are provided are equal? I have these two are equal and these two are equal. Okay, so whatever's provided, they're equal. We have the angles part. Yay. Okay. Now, I need to check the sides. Do the sides need to be equal? No, they shouldn't be equal, they should be proportional. That means they should have the same relationship from going from one shape to the other. So let's take a look. What's the relationship between 10 and 20? Well, 10 is half of 20, okay? What's the relationship between four and eight? Four is half of eight. What's the relationship between six and 12? It's half of 12. So they all have the same relationship going from one shape to the other? Are they all half? Asking for confirmation? Yeah. Yes. So they all have the same relationship. They're proportional. That's what I mean by proportional. They have the same relationship going from one shape to the other. So if I have both of these scenarios, can I say that they're similar? Yes. 
You just need those two things. Are the angles provided equal? Are the sides in the same relationship? If those two are answered yes, then the full shape is yes. Now I want to know what the scale factor is. That is what the relationship was that you guys were just telling me. What's the relationship from one side to the next? One half. So your scale factor is one half. Whatever the relationship is going from left to right, that's the scale factor. This is half of that one, so one half. Okay? Now, similarity statement, we talked about this in congruency. Congruency statement, that's when you name the shape and then you make sure that the letters are in the correct order. So who would like to name this one for us? You name a triangle using three letters, so this one you just use four letters. Whatever order you want. Okay. There is no symbol for trapezoid. Just like a triangle had that symbol, we don't have that for trapezoid. You just write four letters. And then what's our symbol for similar? Swivel. All right. Now you guys have to name this shape in the exact same order as you name this one. So what corresponds to A? F. What corresponds to B? G. What corresponds to C? G. And what corresponds to D? Okay. So just like we did that in the previous unit, you do the same thing here too. So the only thing that's different with similar shapes is that the sides aren't going to be equal. They're going to just be in some relationship, one half, two thirds, whatever fraction. They should have the same relationship as you're going across the shapes. All right, so a little bit more quickly, let's take a look at this one. What does A correspond to? W. So they should be equal, which they are, both right angles. What does B correspond to? Okay, and they're both equal, so we're doing that regard. What about C? X. Are you guys seeing how I know which ones are corresponding? I'm going by the markings. Everybody clear on that? Okay, and then last one, what corresponds to D? Z. Z over here. So again, to figure out what angles are corresponding, you just use the markings. Are they all equal to each other? Are all the corresponding angles equal? Alright, so that's one part, right? We want to make sure all the angles are equal. Great, they are. Now the second thing we're going to check is are all, all of the sides, are they in the same relationship? So let's go ahead and check that. What side corresponds to WZ? AD. So you're going to write that. And what's the measure of AD? It's right here. Come on, guys. Five. Great. What corresponds to DB? ZY. And what is that side measure? Good. CD. And what's that measure? Right, so now we have all the angles are congruent. In order for these shapes to be similar, we have to make sure that these sides are in the same relationship. They have to be proportional. So let's check to see what's going on. We have 20 to 5. What does that simplify to? As a fraction, what does that simplify to? 4 over 1. Make sure you guys don't just say 4. I want to get used to writing in this fraction now. So 4 over 1. What does 28 over 7 simplify to? over one, we're looking good. What does 23 over six simplify to? You can use your calculator and you can use that fancy like fraction simplifying trick. Is that four? Does it have the same relationship as the other sides? So if we have one pair of sides that don't have the same relationship as the others, can I say that they're all proportional? No. no. So would these sides be similar? No, or sorry, the shape. The shapes will not be similar. If all the sides do not have the same relationship, you cannot say that the shapes are similar. Okay, so make sure you're checking all of the numbers that are provided. Because even if you guys just check these, you're like, yay, they're both four, moving on. Right? You have to check everything because one of them might be wrong. Okay? If they're not similar, do they have a scale factor? Yeah, no. No. They don't have a consistent scale factor, so you would not write anything here. And if they're not similar, would you write a similarity statement? Obviously not. That confused me on the test that you guys took for unit four. Many of you guys like gave me one of the questions. You said they're not congruent, and then you wrote a congruency statement. 
so you contra contradicted yourself. That was very strange. Uh, so if they're not similar or not congruent like the unit four, you do not write the similarity or congruency statement. Okay? Questions on that? You just leave a blank. Or you can put an X. Questions on that? Almost done. Those questions we were trying to see if the shapes were similar, and these scenarios I'm telling you that they are. I'm telling you up front that they are similar. We're going to use that to help us find more information about the pictures. So this right here is very important. Just like in Unit 4, if they give you the names of the shapes, if they do it here, that's very important. That's going to help you figure out what's corresponding to what. Notice it, they don't have any of those congruency marks over here. So if you can't tell from the picture with those markings, you have to use the name to figure what's corresponding to what. Okay? And this little squiggle means similar instead of congruent. So that's why they look different sizes, but they're the same shape. So what we're going to do is find the missing angle measures, and then we're going to find the following information here in these proportions. So first, let's find the missing angles. Right? If this is 60, shouldn't there be a 60 in this triangle? That's, yes, that's what similarity means. The angles should be the same, but the sides are different lengths. Okay? So if this is 60, what corresponds to A in the other triangle? Look at the name. R. A and R, right, those are the two middle letters, so they correspond. So how big should R be? 60. Remember, in similar shapes, the angles are the same as the sides that are different. Okay. Right. If this is 40, there should be a 40 in this triangle too. So what corresponds to I? Y. y. So this is also 40. Now we just have to figure out what that third angle is. 80. 80 for each. Since they're corresponding, they're both going to be the same measure. Okay. So again, angles are the same, sides will not be. So now what I want you guys to do is help me finish these proportions. Right, they've given us one side for each triangle. We're trying to figure out what the missing piece is right here. So one way that you guys can do this is by using colors. So you don't have to get them out now because um, this doesn't work for everybody. But I'll show you on the board how you can use color coding to help you with this. Um, so the first side they've referenced is RF. And then the other side that they've given me is FI. <coughs> See that? third side they gave me was AB, and I want to find how to complete this proportion, okay? So I need to find what side is going to match up with the FI. What do you guys think? D1. <coughs> because um, if, uh, if RF corresponds to AB, Mm -hmm. Then FI would correspond to DY. Okay. And what did you use to help you figure that out? Because I saw that um, the F and the D will both be 80 degree angles. Okay. And that the Y and I will both be 40 degree angles. Good. So you can either use the picture to see that F to I went from 80 to 40 and get that side right here, or you could also use the name up here, right? You can see FI matches to DY in the name, and you can get it that way too. Everybody see that? The visualization of using the color coding and actually pointing out the sides you're using can help you a little bit if you prefer using color coding. Um, if it doesn't, then you don't have to use that, but for some people it helps. All right, next one. I have RI and AY, which is right here and right here. And then I'm missing the top of the other ratio, but I know that's going to be related to AD. I always write the top part in one color and the bottom parts in another. So what do you guys think would match? What's the side I'm missing in the other triangle to finish that? Yes? How'd you get that? I drew like circles and different shapes around the ones that are with the letters. Okay. To illustrate? Okay. Yeah. So the side we were missing was the AD one. So you notice that A and D, like the 60 to the 80, you put markings here. 
to go from the 60 to 80 here. So that's a good strategy you can do too. Instead of color coding, you put little shapes around the letters and match them up. So everybody see how I'm kind of going along with those different strategies? So without any color coding or anything, what do you guys think would go in this blank? Um, Use your own strategy. What do you think? F-I. Anybody have any other ideas besides F-I? Does everybody agree that's it? Everybody think it's F-I? Okay, that's correct. Again, you can use your color coding to shade in the, the sides that you do have, and it'll very clearly show you which one's missing. You can match up using the angles. You can match up using the letters and the name or shapes if you decide to label the picture. But you just want to match up all the corresponding parts, and you should be good. Does everybody see how I did that? Okay, dope. Our next question is actually going to be more solving. So they want us to find the measure of Ri. How do you think I would do that? First of all, what side corresponds to Ri? What's the name? A -Y. AY. What's the measure of AY? 12. 12. So does that mean this is 12? No. Remember, the sides aren't going to be the same. They're going to be proportional, not equal. So how am I, if I know this is 12, how am I supposed to find that? How am I supposed to do that? Any ideas? If you can't see the relationship immediately between these two, can I use the relationship between two of the other sides that I already have numbers for to help me figure out what the relationship is? Yeah. A, D, okay, so I have these two, right? And those are corresponding. So what's their relationship? Five over four. So I know that the relationship between two sides that I actually know is five over four. I'm going to use a proportion to help me solve that. Remember, all the sides should have the same relationship. So if one relationship is five over four, this other relationship should be equal. So if I start with 5 over 4, how do I write this other relationship? Yes, very good. The two sides that I knew, 5 and 4. The two sides that I have and one that I don't have, 12 and x. Put an x right here if you want. So I just created a proportion. And how do I solve this? You should know this from algebra. Cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply the 5 and the x together. And I multiply the 4 and the 12 together. And then I divide. You will get a decimal. Decimals are okay. Anybody? 9.2. figuring out how to do it, right? But once, now that you know how to do it, it won't be long. <laughs> all right, so whenever you guys are missing a side, you use other sides to help you. You need to know what the relationship is between the two triangles or shapes, whatever they are. You set that relationship, and then you write down the, the fraction that's missing a piece, and then you press one. That's essentially what we're going to be doing for the rest of this game. Okay? So real quickly, what's the scale factor going from the uh, small triangle to the big triangle? Scale factor is the relationship, remember? So what's the relationship from one triangle to the other? Scale factor is just two sides written as a fraction, but fully simplified. Two-thirds? Mm. If we're going from the small one, see this is the small one? We're still small. small. Yeah, same problem. The small one to the big one. All you have to do is write the relationship between two sides, but in the simplest form. What's one side over here? If we're going from small to big. Four to five. Write a scale factor, you just take two sides and write them as ratio. Any two. Any two, but if you choose the ones like eight and, or if you chose this was 9 over 6 and 12. You have to write them as the simplest fraction. 
So any two sides you pick, just make sure it's sim flat all the way down and you're good. If I were to switch it and go from big to small, it would just switch to five to four. They may tell you what direction to go in, so whichever triangle they tell you to start with, that's the number you would start with. Same numbers, just in a different order. Because they asked you to switch the triangle. So all we're going to do for the remainder of the lesson is just practice with that cross-multiply idea. We're going to have pictures that are already similar. They've already told us, based on the name here, we're going to solve for the variables using proportions, like um, Ella and this group over here helped us decide what a proportion should look like. And then we're going to do the exact same thing here and solve. That's really what the remainder of the unit's about, being able to write these proportions and solve them. So that's what we're going to practice with here. Okay. So, I know that these two are similar based on the name, and again, the name is very important. It's going to help you know what's corresponding to what. I'm trying to find the value of x and y. Which variable you pick one? Which one do you want to start with? <laughs> what's your favorite variable, x or y? X. X. All right, so we're going to start with x. The first thing you want to do is find x. Do you guys actually see it in the picture? Okay. I don't know if it printed very well. Did you see it? It's right here. So my strategy for you guys to create a proportion, the easiest way to do this is to start with x. Physically write down your variable first. That'll keep you centered. It'll help you decide how the proportion should go. Kind of gives you the foundation for actually creating the problem. So if I start with x, the next thing you want to do is figure out what side corresponds to x in the other shape. So what side would correspond to x in the bigger trapezoid? This is fg. What corresponds to fg? BC, that's right here. So it should go on the bottom of this. 7.5. When you're writing proportions, you're going to stack the two corresponding sides. So this side and this side are corresponding, so they get stacked together. All right. Now I need to create another proportion. I need to pick two different sides that are corresponding, but they both have to be values. I don't want to have any more variables in the picture. So what are two sides that both have values? It's a little bit maybe a, tricky. D, e, or e, D, e. Like, does it matter the order of the letters? It actually, it actually does. So you mean like whether you say D E first or D A first? Or is that what you mean? like A D or that doesn't matter as much. Oh. Okay. Um, when you're solving, that doesn't matter as much as when you're writing the similarity statement. It does. Um, for this one, it's very important that you guys write the pieces of the trapezoids or shapes in the same order. Which shape did the X come from, the small one or the big one? Well, answer that question first. Did the X come from the small shape or the big shape? The small shape. So let's write that over here, small. And then did this come from the big shape or the small shape? Big. big. So when you guys are writing your next part of the proportion, it should go small, big again. So the other side that has a number is the small, small trapezoid has a six right there. And then what's corresponding to the six in the big trapezoid? See, I see. I know it's a little bit weird with the bracket. Can you see it? You guys know what that means? The little brackets here. The whole length is nine. Why is that course? Because they're both on the left side. If you look at the name two, D A corresponds with D E. You can use the name two. See it in the name? Right, they're both on the left-hand side, so those are corresponding. I know they're overlapping, but that doesn't change the fact that they're corresponding. Okay. So now, once you guys set it up, small to big, small to big. Oh, now I'm just going to correct. Oh. They're two trapezoids. They're just overlapping slightly. Oh. Okay. I got it. Good. All right. How do I solve this? One one thing is being able to actually write the proportion. The other is actually solving it. Nine x cross multiplies and nine x equals. 6 times 7.5. So what's the value of x? 5. If you want to double check, you can put in your calculator 5 over 7.5 should be the same value as 6 over 9. So you should get the same decimal in your calculator if you divide 5 by 7.5 and 6 divided by 9. You should get the same value. 
and I wrote too big because now I need to find Y. <laughs> so I'm going to put that up here. Someone paying attention. All right, so again, your strategy is start with the variable you're looking for. That's always the best place to start. Just write it down. The variable I'm looking for is Y. Write it down, write a fraction bar. What corresponds to Y in the other shape? Five. The five. Do you see how the Y is on the top of the small trapezoid? What's on the top of the bigger trapezoid? Five. So those two sides are corresponding, and if you're not sure, you can always check the name. It'll tell you what's corresponding. All right, again, what are the two sides that we had numbers for? The six and the nine. But I have a question for you. Is it still going to be six over nine, or did I need to switch it to nine over six because I switched the order of the shapes? Am I still going from small to big? Yes, I am. Okay. That's something to be looking out for. If they were to switch the order of the shapes and they went from big to small, that means you'd have to switch the order of the nine and six as well. But this one didn't. They stayed going from small to big. So I'm going to preserve the six over nine instead of having to switch it. And then again, cross multiply. You would get nine y equals 30. And then what would you get for the value of y? Three point three repeat. Three point three repeat. Yep. All right. Before we go on to the next question, I want you guys with the person next to you. You're going to pick either x and y. Well, there's two of you, right? So one of you is going to re-explain how we found x. So the person sitting next to you, and then that person is going to explain how they found Y. Alright, so with somebody who's sitting next to you, one of you is going to go through the question of how to find X again, and the other person is going to go through how to find Y. Alright, so we're going to talk to each other, kind of unwind that a little bit, then we'll do the next question. <coughs> this is your opportunity to ask a question if you don't understand. <laughs> So I'm going to actually let you guys uh, try this next one independently. There are two variables again, x and y. You're going to pick whichever one you'd like to start with. You're going to write the proportion, solve, and then move on to the next variable. You'll notice I don't have the names here telling you what corresponds to what. So you have to use the angles, the way that the angles are marked to figure out what sides are corresponding. Okay? So go ahead and give that a shot. If you need help, I can come over and help you get started on the proportion. But I want you guys to see if you can find those on your own. And then we'll move into the last two questions. These are the values you should get. I know they're weird fractions, but you can expect those for sure in this unit. Is everybody okay with those? Everybody get the proportion set up. You'll notice in this one the way that the course, uh, corresponding sides work. This side corresponds to this one because of how the angles work, right? The double and triple side corresponds to the double and triple side once you put the uh, vertical angles in there. So you have to use the angle markings to figure out what sides correspond to what. Yes, Oscar? So is it always going to be like when you put x over 25.5, it always be equal to the Yeah, if 
you try to switch, like if you had found Y first, for instance, if you had found Y first, I would not recommend that once you find Y, you put the number here and then try to use that to find X. Use the numbers that are already consistent there. So yeah, so you will be using the 15 and the or whatever numbers those are. You should just reuse those for each question. It just depends on whether it should be 15 over 30 or 30 over 15. If Y had been in this triangle, you would have to switch the order of how you use the 15 and the 30 to match going from big to small. So if, if I switch the, what is the answer? If I switch this, put the Y here, I would have to do Y over 18.5 and then 30 over 15. Because you have to start in the same triangle for the numbers as you did with the variable. So for the X, you'd go X over 25.5 equals 15 over 30, because you started in this triangle. Okay, so that's something to watch out for. All right, the last type of question we're gonna talk about before we wrap up with this lesson um, is this type right here. Now remember, I called this a special name. Do you guys remember what it's called on the other that we talked about before? What kind of proportion is this? There's multiple. talked about it in the context of ratios, but it still applies here. Yep, extended. This is a, an extended proportion. Okay, we're going to do the same thing as we did kind of back there. What's significant about this is that they've told us what sides go with what number. That's really helpful when they give you this, otherwise you don't know how to create the proportion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the name to figure out what the relationship is between the two sides, but I have to use these two as some sort of relationship. So you guys tell me, how would you like to stack these? It's really your choice. Do you want this one on top or that one? No. This one? Yeah. Okay. So let's say you guys are writing your proportion. Okay. So I have 2x plus 1. What side is that? A, B. Now, do you guys see how I don't have a second shape? Up here I had two shapes, so I could see what was corresponding to what. Down here I only have one shape. That's what these are for. These extended ratios and extended proportions are when you guys have one shape instead of two. So you maybe want to write that down. One shape. That is exclusively what they're meant for. These are only given to you when you have one shape instead of two. So the name is going to tell you what corresponds or what value belongs with AB. In this proportion, what belongs with AB? What number? No, number, number, three. So that goes here. Instead of having another shape, they have the relationship right here for you. So AB corresponds with the first number here, three, okay? And then I'm gonna use three X. That's CB, or BC, we just have a spell here. What number does that correspond with? In the names. Four, do you have BC is the middle? The middle number is four. That's what this is for. Instead of having two shapes, they give you the name so you can find those two numbers that you would have found in the shape. That's what the name is for. So now I can set up the proportion and solve. It's a little bit more complicated because you have multiple variables here, but if you cross multiply, you would get 9x equals, what happens when you have two objects up here? You have to distribute. Don't forget to distribute. If you want to write parentheses to remind yourself, feel free. That should be 8x plus 4. That's the biggest mistake. People forget to distribute that 4. And then you would subtract, so x is equal to 4. So the only thing that's different here is they haven't given you two shapes. They give you one shape, and then the other information that you needed is in the directions instead of in the second shape that they provided. Okay. So just to wrap up, let's see if we can figure out how to do this one then. Okay, so again, they give you the name here. I told you how all the sides have a relationship over there. Which one of these would you guys like to start with? The x minus two, all right? X minus two is gonna go on top of our proportion. This is side AB, which is represented here. So what number corresponds with side AB? Two. AB is first, so the two represents AB. Next up is the 11 from our picture, which is AD or DA, which is how they spell it here. What number corresponds with DA? 
five, the one at the end. So that's how you create your proportion, if you don't have two shapes. You use the first shape and then the name. And again, matching up all the corresponding sides. Then you cross multiply. Um, Solve. I think this one's a weird decimal too. 6.4. Yeah, so you use the shape to write the tops and then you use the names to match up the corresponding sides. Alright, so again, one more time. You guys don't have two shapes, they're going to give you the extended proportion to help you figure out what numbers to use to. to fill in the blanks that you didn't have. Okay? Any questions on either of those? Okay, so just confirm for me, is the homework double-sided or is it not? It is. So, everybody, I'm telling you right now, there are two sides to the homework, so please do not forget to do both sides. Okay? There is a variety of different questions you guys will see. They're spread out. A couple of them are multiple choice. Um, please make sure you are practicing all of those. You get practice with determining if they're similar, you have the solving, and then working with proportions. So please be careful with those. Everything that's on the homework and the review is representative of stuff you might see on the test. So please make sure you're using that to practice efficiently. Um, we have about 10-ish minutes until class is over. So you guys can start working on the homework or you can transition into the graded assignment. We do have plus one today. So I'm thinking I'll probably, have I shown you your unit four test yet? No. Okay. I'm hopefully going to do that during class, mm -hmm. um, but I want to give you guys time to work on the grade assignment too. So if you want to focus on the homework now, work on the grade assignment a little bit during class, that's fine. But I want you guys to make sure you get some work done.